Yep. All right. Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your processes, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me as always is my good buddy, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going, Matt? It's going well. I'm pretty excited about this one. It's one that uh, people tend to, to touch on, but never really dive too, too deep into. Um, we did post in the group a uh, like a shout out to, to see what people were uh, were curious about. And we did get uh, quite a few good questions. So I'm looking forward to getting those answered. Your new catchphrase is, I'm pretty excited about this one. Well, I always <laughs> am, man. Look at this show. <laughs> Look at the group we've got. How can you not be excited? That's true. All right. Before we dive in, we do have a quick word from today's episode sponsor. Today's show is sponsored by Termageddon. Termageddon is a privacy policy generator that automatically updates as the laws change so you can keep yourself protected from costly lawsuits. Termageddon partners with agencies by providing them a free set of policies for their own agency website. All that they ask in return is that if you like their service, you recommend it to your clients. But the best part is they'll give you a commission for every one of your referrals. Register at termageddon.com for your free agency account. That's termageddon.com. Thank you so much, Termageddon, for sponsoring the Admin Bar. We greatly appreciate it. So today we are joined by Oliver Sild from WebArcs. Uh, it's a web application security platform that protects websites from plugin vulnerabilities and many other things. And, uh, and Oliver has joined us today to kind of talk to us about WordPress security, answer some of our questions, especially somebody like me who just likes to ignore security and then panics when something goes wrong. I think this will be extremely helpful. So Oliver, good morning. Uh, maybe afternoon by the time, by your time, but uh, hello and how are you today? And why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you found yourself on the admin bar today? <laughs> hey guys, uh, thanks for inviting me actually. Uh, yeah, so it's um, it's actually uh, 4 p.m. here, so it's not so okay. much of a morning anymore. Yeah, no uh, doubt. But yeah, other side of the kind of ocean, you know. Uh, but yeah, like I'm the CEO of WebArcs. Uh, so uh, we are building the web application platform for... Uh, uh, you know, tackling the component security risk, which is for WordPress, it's uh, plugin vulnerabilities uh, for other content management systems like Drupal uh, and, you know, Magento. There's like extensions and modules and, uh, and it's kind of, they're all kind of in the same spot when it comes to security because, uh, as you probably know, uh, when it comes to WordPress, 98% of vulnerabilities that were in the WordPress ecosystem from 2018 were all from plugins. Um, so yeah, it's uh, WordPress in this issue is mainly because of its popularity. So, you know, right now it's like, I think from the top 1 million active websites, it's running 35% already. Uh, so yeah, it's a uh, component security issue is something that is, you know, growing in a scale. And it's getting more and more attention also from the bad guys. So, Yeah. And I guess that's we, the, the give and take we have with something open source like this. Like, it's great that we can have anybody in the world build something awesome for WordPress and we can take advantage of it. But at the same time, you know, that doesn't make everybody qualified to make something solid that's not going to, in, you know, let the bad guys in pretty easily. So, you know, it's a give and take relationship. So I'm glad there's people like you that uh, are, are cracking the code and stopping these people from getting into our sites. That's what we do, yeah. And, you know, with uh, with web applications now, what, like, actually there's like multiple trends that are coming together. One of the thing is that everything is put into cloud. So all the applications and stuff are becoming web applications. And at the other hand, you know, people really don't want to code anymore. So, you know, instead of, you know, coding all the stuff by yourself, they're looking for frameworks and platforms, you know, that allow you know, themselves to kind of put the websites and web apps together like a puzzle, you know, taking something from here and, you know, something from there and putting this, uh, you know, sometimes even very complicated applications together from different modules and plugins, but often not even looking inside of the components, not knowing who wrote them, if they were qualified enough to write them and so forth. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, I mean, let's say I had a brilliant idea. I won't, but if I had a brilliant idea for some kind of plugin or something, you know, I don't have some, I don't have the skills to, to build it. So, you know, I might reach out to somebody from who knows where to 
uh, help me write all this code. And there's no way I'm going to look at it, be able to tell you, oh, you know, there's possible issues here or whatever. So, you know, it's definitely a kind of a scary situation. I'm sure something that's happening all the time. Yeah. So we do have a bunch of questions here from the group. I think we ought to just start with those and try to get the people's uh, questions answered. I think uh, I think most of these are kind of things that we all kind of wonder, and and most of us are people who you know run a website agency and are dealing with clients, and we have to answer to those clients, or we have to try to figure out some of these things on their own. So let's start with the question that Brenda asks. Uh, she asked, "Can the question truly be answered? Does hiding your WordPress login really make the site more secure?" And I saw this one, and I knew I was going to ask it because uh, I had some problems with my website a while back, and it ended up not being a security problem, but in the panic of me trying to get it all figured out, like I moved the login page, I did everything I could think of to like really hide it. So is moving, you know, the forward slash WP hyphen admin, is that a, is that a worthwhile venture or not? You know, we had this uh, discussion also at WordCamp Europe uh, uh, in Berlin a few weeks ago. So we were hosting the, uh, the WordPress security meetup uh, just a bit, you know, close to the venue. Uh, so we were actually on the stage with uh, with Ryan Devhurst, who is running the WP Scan and WP Wound database and so forth. And you know, back in the day, there before like XML RPC and so forth, it actually kind of you know helped to minimize the amount of uh, brute force attacks that your website is getting. But today, like a lot of brute force attacks are actually coming against the XML RPC endpoint. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't really help you in the way that you would expect. So it w it's kind of something that w I would even call sort of a myth today, uh, that when people are trying to, you know, hide the WP admin, uh, change it to something else, and then uh, thinking that nobody else, you know, can, like, first of all, nobody will find it out. <laughs> and the other thing is that nobody will be able to, you know, brute force that, uh, brute force your site. I have actually stopped myself from being able to log in because I'm like, well, shit, right. what did I change that to? I don't remember at all. So now I've, yeah. I've changed several of them, but I've changed them all to the same thing so I can try to remember, which is probably not even less helpful. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would, you know, instead, uh, you know, enable like reCAPTCHA. Uh, there's like reCAPTCHA uh, version, version 3, which is like invisible, um, you know, all these kind of different things. Um, and, you know, two-factor two authentication is, you know, a pretty cool thing which you should use, uh, which is much, much better than, uh, you know, uh, just renaming something and you would have a much, you know, higher level of security for your accounts. And obviously the passwords, you know. Sure. So don't, like, don't just, you know, have, like, admin, admin passwords and, you know, admin and your website name or something as the password. I would suggest everyone to most definitely use password managers, uh, you know, uh, to manage the password in general. It's funny. I, I have, you know, clients when I'll have to like log into some of their accounts for things and, and I'll just write them back instantly. I'm like, thanks for sending me over your password. Please change it to something better because <laughs> yeah. this is terrible. And then they'll send me their password for three or four other things. All of them, they're the same and they're all, you know, like mm. password one, two, three. And I'm just like, oh God. So yeah, that's for sure. So I actually have a question myself um, before I start hitting the uh, the ones that were asked in the uh, in the group. What uh, what would you say is the most common form of attack that you uh, you see on on WordPress sites? So we definitely see brute force attacks as one of the most commons as well. Uh, but then it, it's like a lot of like plugin vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. So you know the most kind of um, attractive ones for the hackers are like cross-site scripting vulnerabilities that allow you allow them to kind of inject like JavaScript and code to your website and, you know, redirect your site to somewhere else or like load ads and that kind of stuff. So yeah, I've um, had the, uh, the redirection issue quite a bit with, uh, with one of my clients that I took on, like that's actually one of the reasons that they approached me. Yeah. So yeah, plugin vulnerabilities are definitely the ones, um, that are the most, uh, like dangerous. Mm -hmm. And the other hand, we see a lot of bots trying to trying actually different uh, plugins and plugin vulnerabilities to get inside of the site and to, to be able to inject some malicious code on the site or even you know add backdoors to get the full access to the site. Um, and the sites can be used you know for a lot of reasons like building botnets and you know a lot of different things. That actually yeah. kind of leads into uh, Jennifer's question, um, okay. where she yeah. says, so WordPress vets uh, plugins for vulnerabilities when they're first submitted, 
but uh, how do they manage those uh, those security or the security of those plugins uh, with updates? So anytime they push an update, like does WordPress take a look at those updates before they go live or? Um, yeah, so WordPress is checking, like WordPress.org is checking uh, the, the vulnerability, like the, the plugins itself mm -hmm. uh, before you publish them to the, to the repository and they will be, you know, they can basically refuse um, the plugin to be listed. Uh, but it's it's much more uh, complicated when uh, they you know start to analyze all the updates that are coming to these plugins. So this is something uh, that is definitely getting criticism uh, when it comes to the WordPress.org right now and the plugin repository in general. But then again, it's a kind of voluntary operation, so you know you can't expect uh, this to have so much of an uh, um, kind of attention from the team as well. Uh, I know like. Again, when we were in WordCamp EU, this was uh, a topic, like a very, uh, very deep topic with, you know, among all the, um, like the security experts there. And uh, definitely WordPress should add some sort of static code analysis tool that would, you know, scan all the updates uh, of the plugins that receive, uh, you know, new versions and new updates as well. Right now, it's not really done in a way that it would detect, you know, all that kind of stuff. But this is also main, you know, because false positives are very easy to come by and there's like just so many plugins and just so many updates. So it might, you know, generate too much of an overhead, I guess. Yeah. And I know one thing when I, when I first started with WordPress, uh, obviously I wasn't making money with it yet or the money I was making was very small. So everything I was trying to get, every kind of, any kind of function I needed to do, I had to get a plugin for it because I didn't know how to do it any yeah. other way. And then any plugin I needed, I had to find the free one. You know, so then I ended up with a, a install with 40 plugins, uh, all that do one tiny little thing and some that haven't been updated in a year or two. And you learn pretty quickly that um, you really want to pay for plugins, you know, because you're just you're going to get more attention to how those things are actually going to function and how they're going to affect your site when you're actually paying somebody who can support a team to make sure that's OK. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to have things slip through the cracks or things happen that they didn't anticipate. I know there's been some big name plugins recently that have had some vulnerability problems. Um, and, you know, I think I think as a community, we all kind of understand that that can happen. Um, and I think a lot of the mistakes these plugin developers make is trying to cover up those things when they happen yeah. or trying to pretend like they didn't happen or patch them without uh, without knowing. I know uh, a, a company that most people here are familiar with, um, they, they had one happen a while, a couple weeks ago, and they sent out an email from what I could tell pretty much instantly when they figured out it happened and what they're going to do to fix it. And I just thought, you know what, I feel totally comfortable with that because they were just honest about, hey, here's the situation, you know, we're going to have this handled, but you need to be aware of it, you know. So do you see a lot of uh, plug-in plug developers trying to hide vulnerabilities or pretend like they didn't happen? Absolutely. Like what we do, like we are also one of the contributors to OWASP, uh, OWASP projects, which is like open web application security pr project. It's a uh, like a worldwide program uh, which includes like different cybersecurity uh, professionals and organizations. And uh, we uh, run one of the projects, like open source projects in there, which is like meant for uh, WordPress and PHP applications that is doing like a static code analysis from the security level to, to detect vulnerabilities automatically from the plugins. So we have built the tool in-house. Uh, so we are also kind of doing uh, analysis about the different plugins that our customers are using. And, you know, very often, like even this week, we have found different vulnerabilities in very popular plugins. And we reach out to these uh, like uh, plugin developers. Uh, and it's not, you know, very rare that they just don't answer uh, or they just don't really, you know, want to deal with it or, they just reply like 30, 30 days later saying, yeah, we're going to fix it, but they will fix it like in two or three months. Uh, the issue is that anyone can find these vulnerabilities. You know, if the developer don't appreciate that someone, you know, really found something out and, you know, uh, they are actually trying to help you avoid these kind of issues. And like, it's much better if some good guys are finding vulnerabilities within your code rather than bad guys, you know, uh, then, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it is weird that in some cases the plugin plugin developers really don't want to you know 
put much attention to it, but eventually this will give you also an understanding of which developers or which developers um, products to kind of avoid um, and, you know, kind of understand that they probably are not as responsible for the stuff they do. So do you feel like a obligation to be kind of a whistleblower when those things happen and make sure people, you know, the, the community knows that there's this issue and nobody's taking care of it. Do you feel kind of a responsibility to let people know that? Well, sometimes yes, but like not always. I know there's some security researchers who are doing like very, like very unethical, um, like disclosures. So they basically just analyze plugins, finding vulnerabilities, and then just for, you know, uh, for their own sake to just, you know, publish the disclosure, like publish the vulnerabilities to the public. So they just kind of, you know, generate havoc. Uh, but I don't know, we are not really into this kind of things. Uh, our main goal eventually is that the ecosystem will get better. Uh, at the same time, uh, we need to, you know, notify the developers about these vulnerabilities that are in their code. But at the same time, we won't disclose it to the public so they, you know, would learn from their mistakes or, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's really about developers in the end. Uh, I would say karma will hit them if uh, they just, you know, ignore it for a long time. Uh, someone, you know, there's a lot of eyes on WordPress ecosystem in general right now. Um, if you kind of ignore, um, you know, the let's say good guys for finding this kind of issues and you're not like getting, putting your attention to it. It's just a matter of time when someone else will find it and use it for some other kind of, uh, uh, you know, reasons. Right. Um, so I think this is a, a good question that kind of goes back into talking about like the types of attacks you see and like brute force being uh, something that happens constantly. So BJ had asked, uh, why do ha hackers care about simple brochure websites when a small business has an HTML site up since 2005 without any issues explaining WordPress vulnerabilities can be quite difficult. And I know when I've gone into customer meetings or, or talked about uh, really the need for a care plan, a lot of this comes up, like, I'm going to keep your site secure and do these measures and stuff. They're like, well, why, why would I need all that? And I'm like, you'd be surprised. You know, I put these the security measures in place and I can see how many bots are trying to attack a website and nobody is immune from this. It's going to happen to your site. So how do you suggest people explain that to just a small business owner that doesn't have any clue about any, how any of this is happening or, or the, the prevalence of it? The thing is that everything that is popular gets attention from both sides. So whenever, you know, WordPress is very, very popular. So the amount of resources WordPress is running on you know, all the web servers, you know, all the different, uh, you know, websites that WordPress is powering, it's all resources on the web that you can kind of, you know, uh, get, you know, get your hands to. So when it comes to the components, the issue is that you only need to one find, you know, this one single component that has like, let's say, cross-site scripting vulnerability, and you might get yourself access to hundreds of thousands of websites. Mm. So it's not, you know, and anti-attacker, he don't really care about, you know, if your if your company is like, a, uh, you know, a brochure company or like just I don't know, do a bakery or whatever. Really, doesn't matter. They're not targeting your business. They're not targeting your website, but they're targeting the software that is used on your website. So this is the main difference. So. Because of that, they are seeking for all these kind of websites on the web that are running on this uh, uh, specific software, and they just try to, you know, attack as many of, you know, as many as possible to get as much resources as they can, you know, to redirect traffic to some other places, um, you know, even like create the botnets uh, to, you know, conduct some further attacks to some more targeted. Um, um, targeted, you know, um, companies or whoever they are targeting. And also, you know, there's possibilities to, um, you know, inject ads. Um, there's really, you know, like ECO spam. We've seen companies in, uh, um, in Indonesia who are like a legit company who is offering services uh, to uh, basically do black hat SEO against your competitors. So what they basically do is they have a bunch of, they use plugin vulnerabilities to get access to a bunch of websites. 
And then they start doing SEO spam and all that kind of stuff on these websites targeted against your competitor. So Google and other ser uh, search engines think that, hey, your competitor basically is, you know, using black hat, uh, you know, SEO tactics. Let's give them like a uh, penalty from search results. Right. So, you know, these kind of services and, you know, these attackers get paid for, you know, they get paid for pretty much hacking other people's sites, injecting SEO spam on top of those. So it's a legit business, you know, it's all about money. And as long as you don't, you know, keep uh, your eye on the, the software that you are using that can be targeted for this kind of attacks, you will be a target. And, you know, we, we did what we did actually um, back like, two, I think two months ago, we went to a conference in Estonia and uh, we deployed uh, multiple websites on different hosting uh, platforms like GoDaddy, uh, SiteGround, I think Bluehost. Uh, on these different places, put some, just, you know, I think I just, you know, installed some Astra theme and there with some, you know, pre-designed thing, just put the WordPress site up, installed WebArcs, and then just waited. I was just waiting to see how much time does it take from registering a domain, putting a website up, and, you know, seeing a tax pouring in. And it was like five hours. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, that's so, crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. So it's like, you know, with, uh, there was, and it's not happening only with WordPress. There was this uh, Drupal, uh, Drupal get on attack, like Drupal get on two vulnerability. Uh, so Drupal was like very careful about, you know, communicating out that they have this vulnerability coming, you know, inside uh, their, you know, core Drupal. Uh, and they said everyone that, hey, we are disclosing or putting the update live, you know, at this time, at this date. So people would, you know, prepare for it. They were like just sending, you know, notifications and, you know, reminding the users constantly because they knew that as soon as they put the update live, people are like, there's attackers going to target those sites. And because Drupal is powering a lot of government sites and, you know, all that kind of like more like, uh, um, you know, more valuable websites would say, uh, they were like very concerned about this. Understood. When Drupal get in two went live, it took two hours when the attacks started pouring in, Jeez. two hours. <laughs> yeah well let's uh let's try to get through i know we got probably five or six other questions that they asked in the group and i don't want us to run out of time to get to all these so let's uh let's let's lightning round a couple of these matt i'll start off with sure. one and then uh, if you'll have one ready to go afterwards sounds good um, awesome so um Faye had asked, does your host play a major role in your site security and does it make sense to pay for premium hosting that claims that security is the primary reason for their better, uh, their better service versus a cheaper hosting provider? Since we're kind of on the topic of hosting, how important is the hosting environment to the security of your website? Definitely very important. Uh, I would uh, always suggest having um, more managed hosting with a focus towards the platform that you're, you're using. So when the hosting and your application have a better fit, the better it is. Um, I would suggest not to use very cheap hostings that are shared hosts, especially the ones that don't have isolation between the sites. Uh, what we see very often is when you have like a shared hosting uh, where you can, you know, uh, have multiple websites in different domain, like different folders. And then if you can access to one of the sites with an like FTP account, uh, then you could basically, you know, go and get access to all of the other sites as well. This is one of the most dangerous setup you can have because when one of your sites get, like even if you have firewall installed like on five of those and one other one that didn't have the firewall installed, you will get all your sites infected in no time. So the malware will just you know, move across the sites laterally. It will be a very, very big headache to you know, clean that up and you know, getting all that sorted out. It's like the well, uh, progression of a disease. Right. Yeah, yeah, well, since we don't have any uh, hosting company sponsors to the show, <laughs> what, what, uh, what hosting companies do you recommend? Uh, it depends really on the, on the level of how technical you are setting everything up. Uh, I would say like, uh, you know, like panels and cloud hosting uh, kind of uh, panels are getting more and more popular that allow you to use, uh, you know, um, digital ocean droplets and, you know, all these different. Uh, so something solutions. like Cloudways does? Yeah, something like that. So there's a lot of different, uh, different hosting providers who do similar things. 
Um, so yeah, like more managed stuff. If you're using WordPress, go for like kind of managed hosting, uh, or at least go for something that is doing uh, as much uh, for you know maintaining the application itself, keeping stuff updated, and so forth. So you're saying I should get rid of the the old websites I have on my shared HostGator account that's like five dollars a month? Yeah, I wouldn't read <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> Short okay. answer. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, you got one for us, Matt. Yeah, I mean, kind of in the uh, the similar vein, Colin asks, uh, "Is it better slash enough to have uh, quality security at the host server level, or would one uh, need security plugins as well on top of that? Like, what's the the minimum requirement for like fairly solid security?" So the thing is that with hosting side, you know the business for the hosting companies keep your site up. So they're not really focused on the, the security on your application itself. They are more focused on the very, you know, solid security on the server level, you know, keeping your PHP versions up to date, uh, you know, making sure that your websites are properly isolated. You know, this kind of security is always like very important and you should definitely, you know, look at the hostings that are kind of putting effort into security, but you should never expect them to try to secure your application itself. So you always uh, have to understand that, you know, keeping applications secure, for example, keeping uh, websites secure from plugin vulnerabilities, you know, hosting company would need a separate team to pretty much analyze what is going on the web, analyze all the components. And most of the hosting companies don't only, you know, support WordPress or Joomla, and they are supporting whatever websites. So for them to be even, you know, understand for them to even understand like what different applications are running inside of their hosting uh, and to be able to secure all of them, you know, having this one kind of security product on your hosting isn't uh, even like very much possible because you would have so much false positives, you know, something that would block attacks on WordPress doesn't block the attacks on Joomla. Um, and, you know, having like maybe even an application on JavaScript or PHP, they all you know, act differently and they all have different security risks. So uh, you should always have uh, security layered. So you have server level security. So it's very good if your hosting can, you know, takes care of it. And then you, ha you should have an application layer security. So for application layer security, I think, uh, you know, security plugins do a great job because they are focused on that. Uh, at the same time, you can also layer the application layer security in a way that you put like, for example, Cloudflare on top, uh, which would, you know, filter the, the main traffic. And then you would have endpoint security as inside of the application itself as well. This would probably be the best combination. So traffic, application, like say endpoint, and then basically the server itself. So three layers would be covered and that would be pretty good. I'm going to put it in in simple text and terms here and give you an analogy. So you got something really important in your house and you don't just sit it in your yard. You know, you put it inside of your house and lock the door. There's your hosting security. And then you don't just lay it inside the, the front door, of course. So you're going to put it inside of a room that has a door and a lock. And when you leave town, you lock that door. And then you probably are going to go ahead and put that in a safe inside of that room, you know, so you have all those layers of security. So if somebody just breaks in the first door, well, they, they can't get to it. So kind of the same yeah. thing. You want to layer all those things on top of each other, which I think is uh, important for people to understand. So that that's a good question for sure. So um, we talked a little bit about the brute force attacks and Michael asked, uh, what what should you do if bots trying keep trying to get into your site? So I do have some security plugin set up where I'll get notifications. In fact, I've just turned the notifications off because it's so annoying that, uh, <laughs> you know, some brute force attacks are happening. So the first few times I was like panicked and then I realized this is just happening constantly and this is my life now. Uh, so what should you do when you notice that something, I had a website not too long ago that was, I mean, I was getting hundreds of those notifications a day. So something was going on with that site in particular. What do you need to do when something like that's happening? Uh, so, for example, with WebArcs, what we have done is that from on the firewall management, basically, you can just enable module, for example, to uh, disable XML RPC. So, uh, I think like only like the most popular plugins that use actively XML RPC is like Jetpack, I think. Uh, but it's not very commonly used, and it's more commonly used by the bots. So, uh, very common thing that people are just doing is to you know disable that or to kind of give access to XML RPC only for a specific IP address, for example, to Jetpack. 
So all these things can be done and also, you know, check for the user agents. So for example, curl and PA, like Python scripts, you know, they are most probably not like regular visitors, you know, the regular Joes that are going to your website. So, you know, disabling this kind of user agents uh, can also be very helpful. Of course, it can be a bit too technical to do it yourself, but that's, you know, that's why you have plugins and, you know, uh, that are focused on, you know, automating all these kind of things for you. Um, so yeah, for brute force attack, I think uh, also kind of, again, uh, recapture uh, all these things. It's common that the brute force attacks are happening. Uh, what else you can do is, for example, again, what we do in uh, WebArcs is that you can save the WP admin location as is, but you can basically do that you uh, set specific IP that can only access WP admin. Mm -hmm. So you can have, you know, you know, your IPs, you know, you're accessing your site either from home, from the office, and you know, where the, your kind of um, admins are also accessing, you can just get the IPs, put them there, and you don't have to worry about at all, you know, the bots accessing it because they don't have your IP. So these are like, you know, very kind of helpful things. And of course, two-factor authentication. Mm -hmm. But this can be more difficult if you have like an e-commerce store. So. Um, so yeah, like still, like for example, um, having two-factor authentication can get your proof force attacks pretty much, you know, useless because they would need your phone. <laughs> right. Right. You got another one lined up for us, Matt? Absolutely. Uh, Alex asks about the, uh, the best security plugins and if there's a solid combination of, uh, of multiple ones. Um, and that uh, he's mainly asking because he's interested in finding a good setup that uh, that he can pass on to clients. But before you answer that, let's let's go ahead and roll this into kind of where we want to go with this too, because I think this this will probably naturally lead us in here. I know several people in there asked about some specific plugins, so uh, things like iThemes or WordFence or things like that. So this question kind of goes along with that. What are you know? Can I add to Matt's question there? Uh, what are kind of your opinions about those things? And then let's start talking about web arcs and kind of what sets you apart from those things and and uh, what problems you found with those that you've developed a solution for? Yeah, I mean, I'm not like, I'm up to, you know, talking about different plugins as well that are security focused. When we were doing the WordCamp EU, um, uh, even like uh, the CEO of WordPress was also in the event with us. So it, we have like a very natural com you know, conversation there as well. So uh, it's really, I think the best combination, as I said, is to have something on the network level and something on the application level itself. So you should look for, like, for example, uh, when I usually suggest someone is that, you know, have Cloudflare on top. Uh, you can even use Cloudflare free version for that. And then have something on the endpoint, whether you use like WebArch, whether you use uh, WordFence. Uh, but I would say that whenever you choose to uh, WordPress plugin, choose something that has uh, uh, like live, web application firewall that can send virtual patches on your site. Mm. So a lot of plugins have just hardening options and you know, do like just some scanning and all these kind of things, but look specifically for the plugin that has a firewall that is getting constant updates. Because with plugin vulnerabilities being, you know, 98% of the security risk already on the WordPress, you know, you need to be updated as soon as some plugin vulnerability is coming out. So, so yeah, I would look for that and always, you know, you get what you pay for. Uh, even with WordFence, you probably know that WordFence free version, for example, has, uh, has uh, firewall rules delayed for 30 days. So when we talk about, you know, how much time it gets to, you know, for example, this Drupal get an example, I saw it was two hours. So 30 days in this kind of cases a lot. So I would say what, what, whichever solution you choose, whatever works the best for you, you obviously might have different things that you uh, consider uh, a best solution for you, whether it's like UI, simplicity of using, having a central dashboard, or you know, however it works for you. If you're an agency, you might have different needs. Uh, but what, one thing is that I would always suggest you to pay for something uh, that you rely on. 
So, so uh, I, I was introduced to your company through uh, it being on AppSumo, which I'm sure uh, there was others as well. So I got a, a nifty little lifetime deal, but I'm going to be 100% honest and transparent. I obviously, by th this conversation, know very little about website security. Uh, so when I installed WebRx or WebArcs, I, um, I followed the instructions. It's super easy to use. I really liked the setup and the dashboard you get and all that was super easy, but I literally have no idea what it's, what it's doing. Like I have websites set up on it, including my own website, and uh, it's been easy to use and maintain, but I really have no idea what it's doing. So tell us about uh, what WebArcs does for, for a website that's set up with it. So actually, uh, I will just jump back a bit uh, to understand, to give you a bit of understanding where it all came from. So uh, uh, I think like five or six years ago, I was running a digital agency. So we were doing, uh, back then we were even doing like Juma, WordPress, uh, Magento development. Uh, and we constantly had the issue that, you know, all these different platforms have the same issue, which is like component security. You know, we had to somehow uh, keep in mind like what kind of components and plugins we used on our customer sites and if they're updated, if there's any security issues related to those and if we need any maintenance to be done there. Uh, but we didn't have a tool for that. So like one thing is that you don't like even have like security services for all these platforms, but you also didn't have a, like a single dashboard to kind of have an overview of all these sites. So we started to build a tool internally, you know, to kind of monitor blacklist, monitor uptime, uh, monitor plugin vulnerabilities, then uh, move towards to, you know, more technical stuff, like actually starting to protect from plugin vulnerabilities and so forth. And yeah, like we launched WebArcs back in July last year uh, as, an, as a public product. Uh, and now the whole theme is 100% focused only on that. And the main focus is to actually, you know, protect your websites from plugin vulnerabilities. We have a web application firewall, which you can install to WordPress. Uh, it has a plugin, uh, which you can, you know, uh, use for easy install. It has all these hardening options like two-factor authentication. You can set security headers. Um, you can really, you know, have, add cookie notices and reduce the number of plugins that you are using on your website, which is, again, you know, reducing the risk of getting vulnerabilities on your sites. Uh, we do security monitoring. Uh, we monitor for modern security practices that uh, should be applied on the web applications and websites in general. Uh, we also have automations for them, so you can pretty much apply them. Uh, we have activity logs, so you will always know who did what on your website. So it would basically tell you who logged in, who edited some post, uh, where did he you know, logged in from, what time. Uh, did he delete something? This have actually helped uh, a lot of customers to actually pinpoint uh, whether some of the editors actually did something wrong and the site wasn't really hacked. Um, and you can also update your plugins directly from WebArcs dashboard. Uh, you can, uh, you know, see which plugins are vulnerable. You will get alerts to email, to Slack. There's a lot of things you can manage. You can see what kind of, like, what users do you have on your account? What user, like, permissions do they have? Uh, and for as we focus this like uh, platform more like for people who are actively building WordPress sites, so they can have like this like central overview of security and manage the security of all the portfolio customers or about all their websites that they build. We also have a uh, a reporting system, so you basically can generate a PDF report, add your own company logo on that, and give it to your customer and say, hey. Like, that's what we've been doing on your website. That's why, you know, you're paying for the care package. There's like, I don't know, 2,000 attacks being blocked over the last month. So, you know, this is actually the, you know, value and helping the, you know, agencies and developers also to communicate the security importance to their own customers. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, this came from a lot of need because we are, we are also an agency and trying to, you know, s s get them understand the same, you know, things. Uh, which is obviously, you know, not a very simple thing to understand if you're not into the security. Um, yeah, and that's one thing I like about being able to log into the portal and see all my websites that I have connected through WebArcs. Everything's right there. I can scroll through them really easily. I can see which plugins are out of date or or what things have happened. And you talked about even all the logs that it takes. I know I reached out to you. Uh, I I had my website stolen a while back, which is the 
the thief still has it up. I hate him. Um, but, uh, you know, I was worried that those, my site had been compromised and they had got inside of it and copied everything and come to find out. Uh, and, and some of this was through you actually going in and going through those logs and checking that that wasn't the actual case. It was actually really helpful for, you know, I didn't understand the logs cause I'm an idiot, but, uh, somebody smart like you could go through there and look and figure out, okay, well, this wasn't a vulnerability issue. It wasn't, you know, an attack on the website. Somebody just, you know, ripped the website off. Um, so that's, that's super neat being able to have all those things in there. So as somebody like me that, uh, might, understands the importance of security, but doesn't understand how security works. And the way I'm using WebArcs, which is basically connect it, turn it on and let it go. Is that a bad way to be using it? Can it be used effectively that way? Well, we have built it in a way that you could, you know, as I said, like it really takes like one minute to set it up. Like you just, you know, it guides you through, you just can add how many websites you want on the dashboard. And then it's pretty much like three clicks to install it. You don't even need to log into your WordPress site separately to connect it, if you remember. So, uh, you know, for this reason, the default setup is already pretty heavy uh, in, in terms of, you know, how it's actually protecting your sites, what kind of uh, configurations it makes uh, for the site to be protected. So you don't really need to go there and start, you know, enabling everything by yourself and, you know, thinking about, like, is, is it actually, you know, uh, hard to set it up or, like, should I, you know, is, you don't have to have like 30 minutes to set everything up. It's really, really simple. So, and that's, that's our focus as well. You know, we don't have, like, we have so much more stuff to do. We have our customers to serve. We have the websites to develop basically. So instead of going into and, you know, uh, taking so much time with each and every website to, you know, secure them, um, it's not something you really want to do. But at the same time, uh, having all these sites in this one place will actually be very effective for you in a way that you have all the information in one place. Imagine if you would have to, you know, visit every website separately and checking the, like the plugin settings and the plugin dashboard on the website itself. It would take you just so much time and you would start missing information, very important information. So yeah, I think you're actually fine. <laughs> Good. Don't worry. See, look at me, look at me go. I'm doing a good job. So let's, let's talk about a little bit about the pricing, because like I said, I did buy an AppSumo lifetime deal that's no longer available. Uh, so let's talk about a little bit about how your pricing model works. You know, for somebody like me, I have, I don't know, I'm probably managing somewhere between 30 and 40 sites. So I'm sure there's different uh, pricing breakdowns for all that. Just tell us a little bit about how the pricing works. So yeah, for the, for like, like a starter package starts from uh, four, $4.99 per website, USD. Uh, so basically you pay per site per month. Uh, probably within the next weeks, we are also gonna announce say annual plans where you can like get 15% uh, discount. Um, so, so yeah, basically $4.99 is for the people who have, who usually manage their own websites or who have kind of uh, a port like a small portfolio of sites if they're a freelancer or so forth and don't really need like reporting or like custom firewall rules and all that kind of stuff. And then we have pro plan, which is like uh, 1499, where you can pretty much do anything with the traffic of the websites. You can write custom uh, firewall rules as many as you want. For example, you could, you know, even uh, write rules in a way that uh, if the traffic comes to any of your websites uh, and they are like, you know, for example, with Internet Explorer 6 or something like that, you could just, you know, uh, set a custom landing page and redirect the traffic to a page that is saying that, hey, you're with an old browser, you know, go update this or something like that. So the firewall management is probably one of the most advanced in the WordPress ecosystem in general because it allows you to remotely manage the complete HTTP uh, traffic. Uh, so you can do really, you know, it's really, you can do anything. So uh, this is more for like a technical developers or developers who really want to kind of get their hands dirty as well. We also have pre-developed modules that you can just, you know, one click install on top of your sites, like, you know, disable XML RPC remotely for all the websites at once uh, that you have and so forth. And then uh, there in the pro plan, there is also... Um, uh, reporting, so you can generate PDF reports that you can give to your customers and show them, you know, uh, what is actually going on on their sites. And then you will also have a team management. 
So the team management basically is something that you can use to give your developers or to the people within your agency, for example. Um, uh, and so they can add additional websites, remove sites, configure them and, uh, you know, have like your whole, your whole team in the WebArch dashboard uh, and their own accounts under your. Uh, and yeah, like ProPlan is pretty much like just more granular, more, um, more like technical features, uh, something that, you know, an agency would probably use more. Right. And if you're putting people on care plans that are paying you, you know, hopefully a pretty decent amount a month, um, that's a pretty manageable cost to be able to make sure that those sites are protected. And, and obviously when you can give your customers proof that you're doing work every month for them and, and you can show them some of the things you're doing, especially when it comes to security, I think that's pretty important. Um, and I do see on your website here, which people can go to your website, we'll leave a link, but it's webarcsecurity.com. Uh, it looks like you offer a free trial as well. Why don't you tell us about that if people are wanting to go check it out? So yeah, we have 14 days free trial. Uh, as soon as you just sign up, you will have a pro plan with full access to all the features. Um, so you can, you know, go in, add your websites, add the firewall, uh, check it out how what what kind of traffic it will start walking on your website you can be very surprised uh, because you know you will for some of the customers they have even said that it's like it feels like suddenly you have a vision you know like you understand what is actually being you know um, going against your website and you can understand like what kind of plugin vulnerabilities are being tried to exploit it on your website and so forth um, and yeah you will basically like free trial is really you know no strings attached just you know you can try it out um and uh if you like it you can then you know subscribe to our paid version um and there's also add-ons for example if you just pay like three nine three forty nine whenever your website is getting hit with like you know if your password is being stolen if you're using admin admin or something like that uh with 399 we have basically like a guarantee mode that whenever something happens to your site it will be cleaned up by our security analyzed by free so whenever it happens it's kind of like you know uh, like a live stream or like, you know, yeah. Go. Insurance. Insurance. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, Matt, you got anything to add before we, uh, we we're, we're going on almost an hour here, so we probably need to wrap it up here pretty quickly. You got anything else to uh, add to the conversation here? No, I think that, uh, I mean, we, we covered a lot of questions. In that episode, yeah. So, uh, I, I think now if anybody has any further questions, definitely leave comments below and, uh, I'm sure Oliver, myself or Kyle will, hop in and uh hopefully it was it's mostly oliver answering the questions <laughs> yeah, um, sure. you don't want me answering <laughs> no <laughs> but uh yeah that's uh that was a good episode I like that. yeah absolutely and oliver's already in the admin bar group so he's he's around uh so hopefully he'll be there to answer some of those questions for sure well oliver do you have anything to add before we get out of here we really appreciate you coming on and kind of helping us through all this today i'm sure we can think of a million more questions but i know we made a lot of ground up today so uh, is there anything you wanted to add before we wrap this up? I think, yeah, whenever you have any questions, uh, want me to hop in, you can just tag me on the admin bar Facebook group. Uh, or if you want to have a longer discussions, you can just come to webarchsecurity.com. There's this uh, chat bubble and you can just open up the chat bubble and say, I want to talk to Oliver and I will just hop in there and <laughs> Oliver, uh, no. we're going to have a chat. <laughs> yeah, Oliver, awesome. No. Okay. Well, well, that is awesome. All right, guys. Well, uh, uh, again, Oliver, thanks so much for joining on the joining us on this today. We really appreciate it. And as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way for you to help us is to share the content, subscribe to our podcast or YouTube channel, and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time, and it greatly helps support the show. So that is all for now, and we will catch you all in the next episode. Bye bye. See you. here yeah unless the <laughs> fire department comes and wakes you up that's true that did happen yesterday they asked me if i had a stroke what wrong house so <laughs> <laughs>